This is Niger Canada girl. My name is Neka, that Nigerian girl in Canada who shares her experiences as a new immigrant. And you can already tell what my video uh, would be about today. So today I'll be talking about how to apply for the US non-immigrant visa from Canada. So yes, like I always say, I'm not an immigration consultant, but I just share my experiences and provide useful tips that could also help you if you're going through the same journey I am or you're about going through a process I recently went through. So, you know, I could give you tips, heads up, that would be very useful. So yeah, like I said, I recently applied for my US visa. Well, recently, not so recent. Um, I actually put in the application in um, October. I had my interview in November, towards the end of November. So yeah, and I've been, um, I've received my passport back and I was given 10 years, um, 10 years, yeah, on my US, uh, for the US visa. So now I'm just gonna take you through a step-by-step -step process of how you can also apply for your US visa here from Canada, um, whether you have a workers permit or you're a permanent resident, okay? But you know, um, my videos are always a bit more biased towards permanent, uh, permanent residents because um, that's what I am. So I'm only able to share my experiences, okay? But um, for the US visa, I'm sure it also applies to you, even if you're not a permanent resident. So yes, let's get into it right away. So um, on one of the blog posts um, I have, um, I think that's, no, it's not the most recent, but it's one of the blog posts where I had talked about um, countries you could visit visa-free um, as a Canadian permanent resident. I did mention that US was not on that list, but not to worry um, because the visa is quite easy to get, especially if you're already a permanent resident. And I did say I was going to share my experience after I get mine. So here I am. So I went ahead and applied for um, a US non-immigrant visa. I keep saying non-immigrant because there are different types and this is also very important um, when you start your application, you need to know the exact type you need to apply for, okay? So yes, um, the first thing you have to do is, um, so not to worry, I'm going to share the links in this video and I'll also have a detailed blog post that you could go to, um, go back to every now and then that could help you, you know, follow through these links and also start your own application process. So yes, so um, I went to the US visa, um, I went to the US um, the website where I did apply for the US visa. And um, the first thing I did was to fill a form called the DS-160 form. So before, this is the first step. Um, it's largely, um, I can largely categorize it into three steps. So there's the first step, which is where you apply. There's the second step, which you pay the um, application fee. And then there's the third step where you um, schedule yourself for an interview, an appointment. So these three stages are different, but it's seamless. They all flow into one another. And by the end of the last one, you should have been done um, with your application, okay? So now the first step, which is putting in the application itself, of course, it's all done online. So, um, I mean, I did everything from my bed uh, and it took me less than 30 minutes or about 30 minutes. And that's because I was um, multitasking and doing other things. So it's very easy to apply for. That's the first thing I'll tell you. Um, it's easy to do. And um, trust me, if you process, <laughs> if you process um, a permanent residence um, express entry, um, if you went through the express entry process or you came here to study, you have filled worse and more complicated and more difficult forms, okay? So this is pretty straightforward and um, you rammed it up there and then. So the first thing you should know before you apply is that you need to have some things ready. First of all is that you should have um, your international passport and it should have at least six months validity. It shouldn't be less than six months validity. I actually recommend if it's six months validity, um, you might want to renew it even before you apply because between when your interview is scheduled it might become less than six months so you need to make sure you have a current international passport um you'd also need a passport photograph so i'll also put the link there where you can see the specification because um they always have a specification of how they want the passport to be white background and all that okay and um they would also be asking you questions like where you work how much you earn um the date you'd be traveling how long you'd be staying who you'd be staying with um if you do say you'd be staying with someone say a friend or a relative they'll ask you questions like what the person does 
um, for the person's contact number, the address, um, the person's email address as well. Okay, so you just need to make sure you have all these handy so that you don't, you know, find yourself leaving and coming back to the um, application form. So there's something I should tell you about the application though. Um, if you leave it dormant for a while, it logs you out. However, you can just log back in and continue from where you stopped, but only if you take note of the application number when you start. Because for every time it logs you out, regardless of the number of information you've put on the, on the, um, on the form, it's going to wipe it out. So the only thing you need to do is put back your application number and it brings it back. So if unfortunately you did not take note of that number it generated for you at the beginning of the process, you'd be literally starting again, which trust me, I hate filling forms. Yes, I said it. I hate filling forms. But the worst part, the only thing worse than filling a form worse than filling a form is filling the form and filling it all over again. So just take note of that number when you start so that if for any reason you are logged out you're able to just go right back in and you have a 30-day period to complete the application okay so you can start and if there is no hurry and you feel oh you know what let me start and maybe finish it up um, over the weekend that is absolutely fine just take note of that number so like i said i'll be sharing the link where you start your journey to applying right there in my description box it would also be on my blog so these are the sort of questions you'll be asked Okay, so um, the questions you'll be asked, um, it's not any information you don't already have access to, like your passport number, country where it was issued. I mean, if you've been through any um, immigration process of any sort or coming to another country, it's just all the same um, similar questions. So just make sure you have all your information ready. You should know what date you want to travel, your reason for traveling, and very important, if you're visiting, you should know the category of visa. You're applying for because they'll give you different visas you have this tourism okay i mean the, the the medical ones and all that so take note of what yours is and um be very specific when you're putting that because uh, putting the wrong visa type could you know put a clog in your wheel and you wouldn't want that so this is the first stage it's just pretty much going through that application and filling it out like i said it's seamless there is no information you um, they would ask you you don't already have okay so just make sure you have everything they might need and i'll elaborate more on my blog so that way you'll be able to see the sort of questions um, you'll be asked so in case you don't have any of these documents you'd have it handy as well if you're a permanent resident they would ask you um, your country of, of um, citizenship ask if you're a citizen of any other country um, of course mine was no i'm just um, the only country of citizenship i have is nigeria and then they would ask are you a permanent resident of any other country and so that's where you can um put in canada if you're a permanent resident okay and there's this um popular belief well maybe based on statistics that if you're a permanent resident getting the u.s visa is always a walk in the park because they believe oh you're a permanent resident what could you possibly want to run away from canada for however um this is a popular belief but don't take it for granted i know people who have been denied despite being permanent residents. So this doesn't mean it's a difficult interview, it just means you need to be saying the right thing and you need to go through the right process. At the end of this video, I would also give some tips that would also help you, okay? All right, so the second process is paying the application fee. So there's an application fee to be paid. Um, it is 160 US dollars. Um, it comes to about 200 and something Canadian dollars. Um, I can't remember what it was. Okay, so this can be paid right there online. I paid with my credit card you can do that as well and after that like i said it's always a seamless flow but after making the payment there's um it's called an mrv fee that's the application fee so you'll be issued a receipt upon um approval of the payment and this now takes you to the next stage where you'll be scheduling your interview you'd require the number of that receipt they would ask for it so that's proof that you can proceed to go ahead and book your appointment because you've made that payment okay so after you um, put in that number you'd see available dates now when it comes to available dates it really varies um, like when I applied um, I really wanted to go to the US on the 18th of November because my mom was visiting around then um, but unfortunately the earliest date I had um, here in Toronto was the 29th of November 
although I had seen in um, Calgary there was an available date for the next week in Montreal it was also as far as um, as Toronto it was like a month um, and some weeks in um, Quebec City it was also available for the next week so it really depends on where you are but of course when choosing your availability you um, definitely choose what state or what province you're in or what city you're in and that will determine when the earliest available date is so heads up if you know you want to travel say two months um, two or three months from now it would be great to apply now because you really can't tell when the nearest available date would be mine was like um, a month and a half so I applied early October, nearest available date was um, was at, at the end of November. So in the end, it was a little over a month and a half, okay? So yes, that does it. When you're done, you get a confirmation email, everything is good to go. Um, about two days before your interview, they would send you another email. And now this is where they would be very clear about what they need you to bring to the interview. So after your application and... Um, you can print out the application form. You'd also get an email containing that form. You can print it out as well. That is what you'd be taking to the embassy for your interview. You'd also be going with your passport. They usually do not allow you carry bags there, gadgets, electronics. So the only thing you're going with is your passport and the form. I know for a while, it took me, I had to figure it out. I'm like, okay. To start with, I'm going to need my Google Maps on my phone. So if you're saying not to come there with a phone, where exactly am I supposed to keep my phone? Or how am I supposed to go about this? You can go with a small purse. Um, in that mail, they'll send you, they'll let you know the requirements of what you can come with, what you can come with. You can come with a hat and all that. And um, there should be a size, the purse should not be above. So um, lucky for me, I had a small purse. So I took that with me. So I, however, had to go somewhere really close to keep my phone. So some smart business people started a convenience store really close to the U.S. Embassy here in Toronto. Um, what, depending on the province you're in, I'm sure there should also be somewhere um, where there would be a convenience store or people who would help you keep your personal items until your interview is over in exchange for a small amount of money. Back to this convenience store. So I understand they've been there for so many years and it's really a great business because they charge you $5 to give you a locker. So um, the only thing I had to keep was my phone, but of course I still had to keep it because your phones aren't allowed there, they'll turn you back actually. So I, um, I, I had to go there, pay the $5 and they kept my phone for me and after the interview, I picked it up. Okay, so now, um all for the last um, few minutes i've been talking about the application process okay so now let's talk about the interview date proper okay so on the 29th of november it was my interview date mine was scheduled for 9 30 a.m in the mail they sent me two days before they had said do not come um earlier than 15 minutes before but just to be sure that you get there in time because the last thing you want to do is miss a u.s in visa interview please do not you can actually reschedule after you schedule a date if something comes up um, having a good reason you can reschedule but please do not miss your US interview okay so on the day um, I was requested not to come 15 minutes anything more than 15 minutes earlier but I had to get there at least an hour or 30 minutes earlier because I had to first make sure um, it was my first time I'm going there um, that I knew where I was going. I gave myself enough time to get lost <laughs> Just in case even though it was pretty easy to find it was really close to the train station However, thankfully there's a Tim Hortons just down the road. So that was the first place I went Sat there for about 20 to 30 minutes and when it was about 15 minutes to my time Just beside Tim Hortons was the convenience store. I went there gave them my phone went back to the embassy joined the queue There was a security check um they checked me you know with the i had to pass through the scanner took off my shoes and all no i didn't take off my shoes you won't be asked to take off your shoes but it's a proper scan okay just to make sure that um you're not taking any of the items in that they had asked that you do not take in okay so after that this is how the process was um i'll give you a picture of how it looks i mean it's just like um Imagine what um, a bank, a bank, um, a banking hall looks like, where you're on the queue and then there are different tellers. So that's the same way it is. 
just that this time the different sellers um, or the different officers have different functions. So the very first queue I joined was a really short queue. Um, it wasn't a long queue on the day I went there. Um, the very first seller had asked for one of the requirements they wanted. He had said, come with your permanent residency card, um, come with your international passport and come with a letter. Okay, so those are the things they needed. They didn't ask for anything more. Um, depending on what you apply for, they would ask you what to bring. But before the day, they would send you a mail requesting what you should bring. So you don't have to worry about that. So the first officer I went to, um, he asked me to present my passport, the letter, and of course my PR card. And I gave it to him. He checked it out, entered some, um, some things from my card into his system. And then he gave it back to me, told me to proceed to the next queue. Now the next queue, same thing, asked for my card, my PR card and my passport. But this time, uh, my fingerprints were taken for both hands, okay? And then the next queue I was moved to, that was now the last queue where I got to talk to an officer, okay? So I'll just give you a quick rundown of the kind of questions I was asked, just so that you're able to prepare, okay? So um, I was asked um, if I'd ever been to the US. I said, no, I have never been to the US. And they said, well, what are you going there to do? Um, so while filling my form, I have an uncle there. Well, a distant relative is actually my mom's cousin. So um, I had said, I'm going to visit um, a relative and his family. Oh, how are you related? Oh, he's my mom's cousin. Okay, what does he do? Oh, he's an investment advisor. Okay. And um, I'm trying to remember all the other things they asked me. They said, oh, I see you're a permanent resident. I said, yes, I am. Was it through the express entry? I said, yes, it was through the express entry. Then he said, oh, what do you do? I told him what I do. He's like, okay, um, your application has been approved. Have a nice day. Like, so there and then you you know if your application is approved or not. So if your application is approved, the next steps would be that your passport will be mailed back to you in about um, five business days, depending on the mailing option you choose. I chose to pick up and my pickup, um, my pickup dates, uh, my pickup dates came, and I went to pick up. You just need an ID while picking up, a government issued ID. So I went with my driver's license. Okay, so um, and that's pretty much how it goes. So now the tips I had said I'm going to give you, um, from experience, it was easy. Okay, however, I've had people tell me, oh, Neka, I tried applying, and yeah, I was a PR. Yet, you know, they rejected me. So there could be some reasons why you could be rejected, although it's not written anywhere. So if you just became a PR in Canada, I do not think it's advisable that you already apply for a US visa immediately. So what are they thinking? Okay, you just came to Canada and you already want to go to the US. Was coming to Canada just part of the big picture to escape to the US? You know, there are many... Um, there are many alarms going off in their head at that point, okay? So I know I heard of someone who applied um, three months after he got here and he was rejected. So the standard is six months and above. I would actually advise you give it some allowance and make it seven months and above. So that way they know that this person has come to Canada, they have a stable job, they've established some security around themselves, you know, they're fine and they're just going to visit. Because I don't think, or they don't think you'd want to start exploring other countries when you just arrived US, what, um, you arrived Canada, what, two to three months ago. So that's probably their thinking. So number one tip is I'd advise that you apply for your Canadian, um, you apply for your um, US visa if you'd like to go visit. You'd apply for your US visa about seven months and above after you've been in Canada because that's actually one of the questions he asked me. He said, oh, how long have you been here? I said about eight months. He's like, okay. So I think um, that's, that's going to be really helpful. Okay, and also dress well, really dress well because a lot of the time I think they just read people's body language because these people have less than what, three to four minutes to determine if to give you a visa or not. So sometimes, I mean, it might just be on first appearance basis. They might not really have any reason to deny you, you know, but it could just be a case of mm, just something about this person. So don't allow room for that. Dress well, wear a smile, don't be nervous. Come on, you're in Canada. Like, why would you want to run away to the US? So I'm not saying you should be arrogant or anything, but you should be relaxed and, you know, you should just have this firm and um, firm but yet friendly face, okay? 
don't be jittery you're not um, you're not going there to kill the president okay so don't be jittery about anything just be relaxed smile if you have to not excessively though but yeah you know what i mean okay and then i'm sure everything should be good okay so yes this was pretty much my experience um, applying for the u.s visa i hope this was helpful um if you'd be applying soon too i would advise you watch this video i would also advise you visit my blog and um, read the post there um it's nigercanadagirl.com um so there's a detailed post with all the links there are also the links where you can start the application from in my description box so yes thank you guys for watching if you are yet to subscribe just hit the subscribe button below okay thank you so much for watching and please share with your friends and don't forget to drop comments if you have any drop questions if you have any and i'll be very happy to answer them okay to my next uh, to my next video thank you for watching have a wonderful week bye